Hi and welcome! So in this video we're going to work through some row reduction examples. So our task for these examples is to write the system we're given as an augmented matrix and then find its reduced row echelon form. I'm going to give us two systems here, one in two dimensions and one in three dimensions. That's one with two variables and one with three variables. So the first system we're going to look at is 4x plus 8y equals 2 and 12y equals negative 1. The second system we'll look at has three equations and three variables. It's x minus y plus 4z equals 4, 2x minus y plus 4z equals 7, and y minus 5z equals negative 1. So we need to write these systems as augmented matrices, and I'm actually just going to do that first for both of these just to get it out of the way and make sure we remember what our ultimate goal is with row echelon form. So for the first system, I am noticing that I already have all of the variables on the left hand side with the constants on the right, so I can immediately put this into the augmented matrix. Each equation is its own row with those coefficients, so I'm seeing for the first equation I have 4, 8, and 2. And then for the second row, I don't have any x's, but I have a 12 for y, so that's in the second column, and then I have negative 1. Remember, I instead of writing an equal sign or any of the variables, I just leave those things out, and I replace the equal sign with this vertical line. So this is my augmented matrix for this system. 4, 8, 2, 0, 12, negative 1. We can repeat this for the second system. So the second system also already has everything on the right sides of the equation. So I just need to write down the coefficients. Wherever a number isn't written, that means there's a one. So for example, in the first equation, we'll have one, negative one, four, and four. So those are the numbers that go across the first row of the matrix. Then we repeat this for the second equation. I have two, negative one, four, seven, and for the final equation, I have 0, 1, negative 5, negative 1. So this is the matrix for this system. So now that we have these two matrices that represent our systems, our goal is to row reduce them in order to get to reduced row echelon form. Reduced row echelon form helps us see the answers really quickly, and it's really just an alternative way of finding the solution to the system rather than doing it by hand with the equations. So in two dimensions, we have ones on the diagonal and zeros in the other spots, and same in three dimensions, so ones on the diagonal and zeros in the other spots. So we want the left-hand side of the matrix to have the specific way it looks, but the right-hand side is going to have some numbers in it on the side across from the vertical bar, and that's going to give us the solutions to the system. So let's try this out, and we'll start with the matrix that came from the two equations. So when I first get a matrix and I'm trying to get it into reduced row echelon form, I like to just pay attention to what I already have that might help me get there. So here I'm seeing that I have a zero in the bottom left, and that matches up what we're ultimately going to want for reduced row echelon form. So that spot is kind of already finished, but the rest of the spots aren't. So as I do this, I'm going to be taking some notes that help me keep track of the steps I've taken. This is really helpful if you get some mistake along the way, then you can follow yourself back and see what you were supposed to have done in each step. So I'm going to try to get a one in the first row, first column. So this first position needs to be a one. And in order to do that, I can just take that whole first row and divide it by four. We really think of this as multiplying by one fourth. So I'm taking that first row and I'm multiplying by one fourth. So four times a fourth is one, eight times one fourth is two, and two times one fourth is one half. So I have this new row one. And now I notice that I have this one in the position that I want. So I now have the one and the zero completed for my row echelon form. So I wanna get a one where this 12 currently is. That's going to be my next goal. I'm doing that rather than tackling the two. We do this so that we don't mess up anything along the way. There's sort of an order that we do this in to keep things going smoothly. You can try it a different way and you might notice that it's just easier to do it this way. There's lots of room for you to try and just see what works. So I'm gonna take this 12 and I wanna make it into a one to get me to that row echelon form. 
And so I'm noticing that I can just take that second row and divide it by 12. It means we're gonna have fractions, but let's do it, that's okay. So I take 1 12th of row two, and this becomes my new row two. So zero divided by 12 is just zero. 12 divided by 12 gives me that one I'm looking for. And negative one divided by 12 is just negative 1 12th. So now I have the one zero and the one as I want for my row echelon form. And I just have this two left over that I need to fix up. So my goal here is to get that two to go away. I want it to be a zero. So I need to subtract two from it in order to get the two to go away. So I'm seeing that I can take the first row and subtract two of the second row. So I'm gonna take the first row, subtract two of the second row, and that's going to become my new row one. So I sort of do that operation and replace my first row with that, but I maintain the second row as sort of a history of what was there before. So we're going to take the first row and subtract two of the second row. So I'm gonna write out a little bit of work here just to keep track of things. So I have one minus zero in the first spot. Then I have two minus two in the second spot. This is what we wanted to get rid of that. And then I'll have one half minus a negative two over 12. So remember I'm taking two of the second row and subtracting it off. Now I just need to simplify. So the left side of my matrix is still looking good. I have one, zero, and zero, one. So this is great. We've done our algorithm and we've gotten to a place where we're in reduced row echelon form. So I just need to simplify what's on the right-hand side of the vertical bar and we should be good to go. So with these fractions, I'm going to write everything with a denominator of six. So one half is three sixth, that minus minus becomes a plus, and two over 12 is one sixth. Then those simplify to be four sixth, and four sixths is the same as two thirds. So I have to write out the matrix a couple of times to keep track of that simplification, but I'm finally getting to my answer, which is my reduced row echelon form. And there we go. So just to make sure you see how this gives us our final answers, let's write out the equations again from this new matrix. So the first row has one X and zero Y, and that would be equal to two thirds. So that's X equals two thirds. The second row has zero X plus a one Y is equal to negative one twelfth. So that means Y is equal to negative one twelfth. And that gives us our solution. So we write down that point, two thirds, negative one twelfth, and this would be our solution to the system, which we can now read off given the matrix that we found. Okay, so this really just takes some practice and doing this many times and keeping track of what the steps are that you're allowed to do. So I know it can feel a little unusual. Let's try another example. And it might be that even after seeing these examples and the ones in the next video, you're gonna to need to see some more and that's totally okay. There are other videos out there with more examples or you can just practice on your own. But just be nice to yourself if you're doing this for the first time, it can be a lot to keep track of. All right, so let's try our second example. Here is the matrix that we found earlier in the problem when we converted the system to the augmented matrix. And I'm gonna highlight here the values that we already have completed for the reduced row echelon form. We have a one and a zero that are already good to go. So typically our process is that we wanna start in the upper left hand of the matrix and work our way down. So I'm gonna start with that one and then I wanna get the zero one in the next row and then the zero zero one in the third row. So that's gonna be my goal first, and then I'll work on getting the other zeros. So I already have a one in this first location, and so I'm gonna start working on the second row. I know I want a zero in the first spot, and so I'm actually just gonna swap row two and three to make this happen. You could do it a different way, you definitely don't have to do it this way. I'm just going to do this because I just wanna get a zero there right away. So when I swap row three and row two, this is my new matrix. And now you actually see that we have a zero and a one in the right spot in the second row. So I'm working my way down. I have the one in the first row. I have the zero one in the second row. And now I want the zero zero one in the third row. We're gonna get that first and then work our way back. So this two down in the bottom left, I need this to be a zero. And so I'm gonna need to cancel this out with another row. I'm noticing that if I took this two and subtracted two from it, I'd be good. So that's our row three minus two times our row one. And this is going to become our new row three. So I'm gonna write that out, give us some room to do that. 
our first two rows stay the same, but in this third row, we're taking our value and we're subtracting two times the first row. So I have two minus two times one. I have negative one minus two times negative one. I have four minus two times four. And I have seven minus two times four. So I'm taking that third row and I'm subtracting off two times the first row. You could do this in your head if you want, but I often get confused and so I like to write it out if I can. So now going from left to right, our two minus two cancels and we get zero. Then we have negative one plus two, that's one. We have four minus eight, that's negative four. And we have seven minus eight, that's negative one. So now we have this zero in the spot that we wanted and we can keep progressing through. So we just keep going spot by spot until we get where we wanna be. So next I see this one in the bottom row. I want this to be a zero as well. So if I look at the row above it, I can take row three minus row two and that will become my new row three. I'm specifically using row two here because I don't wanna use row one. It has that one in the first column which would mess up the zero I've already worked so hard to get. So we're gonna use the second row because it has a zero in the first column and so it won't mess up my zero there. So I'm taking row three and I'm subtracting row two and that's gonna become my new row three. So let's write that out. I have zero minus zero, one minus one, negative four minus negative five, and negative one minus negative one. Now we just need to simplify. So I have zero in the first location, then I have zero again, negative four plus five is one, and negative one plus one is zero. And there we go, so I have zero, zero, one. That was really convenient that it ended up with a one there too that we wanted. So okay, we've successfully done about half of this really. We've gotten the ones on the diagonal and the zeros below it. So that's always our goal first. And now we're gonna work on the top portion of the matrix. So what we have here is row echelon form. We just wanna get it to reduced row echelon form so we can read off the answers. So now I'm seeing this negative five in the second row. I'm gonna work my way back up through that. I wanna get that negative five to become zero. So I need to maybe add five to it to get it to be zero. So I'm gonna take that second row and add five of my third row. That's gonna then become my new second row. So we have zero plus zero, one plus zero, negative five plus five, and negative one plus zero. So that's taking the second row and adding five of the third row to it. So now I'm left with zero, one, zero, and negative one. Okay, we're making progress. We just have this top row left. Now it's tedious, but we're making it. So now I'm gonna work on that negative one in the top row. I want it to become zero, so I need to add one to it. I see if I add the second row, that will cancel out the negative one. So let's do row one plus row two, and that will become my new row one. So I do one plus zero, negative one plus one, four plus zero, and four plus negative one. Now my top row is one, zero, four, and then three. So I'm almost there. I just have this four left that I'm trying to get to zero. So I need to subtract four from it. I'm seeing that I can do that by subtracting four of the third row. So I'm going to do row one minus four of the third row, and that's gonna become my new row one. And when I do that, I'm actually just left with my final matrix. It's just that one times four that I'm subtracting off. So I now have one, zero, zero, three in my top row. And wow, after a lot of steps, we made it, we did it. This is our reduced row echelon form. So okay, from this, we can get our solution. So the first row gives us that X equals three. The second row gives us that negative one is Y. And the third row gives us that Z is zero. And so our solution point is three, negative one, zero. All right, so those are two examples of row reducing a matrix. It can really take a lot of steps, and I believe it's always a good idea to just check your work with technology in some way because it's really easy to make mistakes and it can be really frustrating. But this is a good process to just practice and really understand how it works behind the scenes so that you can respect what the computer is doing when we start to just use technology to do this for us.
Both of the examples we did here were independent systems where there was only one solution. In the next video, we'll go through what happens to correspond to the other types of systems. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.